Luis, I, I like to ask a softball question right out the gate before we dive into the film. What was your first job in the movie industry? I think my first job in the movie industry, um, by job, I would say getting paid for it. Uh, <laughs> that qualifies as a job, right? <laughs> um, I would say, you know, aside from, I would say, a, a film editor. I, I would say that was my first, the first time I started making some money in the film industry. I started editing commercials. I edited feature films before uh, my, from my student colleagues. But I don't think I got paid enough to say that that was a job. <laughs> I feel that one a whole lot, actually. Um, Shatter falls a rich divorce. Chris falls in love with a mysterious woman named Sky, where Chris' ex-wife and his ch uh, child eventually get trapped in desperate fight for survival, with most likely to ensue. What attracted you to direct this project? Well, I read the script right after uh, having done Kidnap. And I thought that it was a challenge very similar to my previous film, Kidnap, because uh, where Kidnap, most of it happens inside of a car. In this film, a big chunk of it happens inside of a house. Uh, and also it's a film with very few characters. Um, so when you read the script with those elements and you feel that it's a, you know, and, and you read it and you feel like, oh, this is a page turner and it keeps you gripped to what you're reading, you really feel that, or well, at least myself, that I felt that I was in front of a great piece of material at the same time, a great challenge because to make a film with so few elements is always a big challenge. But I, I like that. I like challenges. And I thought, I saw the film and I thought, I think I can make this. Um, the film obviously resonated some of my favorite movies, uh, one of them is Misery. And I said, you know what? I, I want to do it. I'm ready for it. And, you know, it's not the easiest film to make, but I thought, uh, you know, it's, it would be definitely one of the most interesting things I can make. <laughs> Yeah, with the twists and turns and the script is kind of very much layered, right? You know, there's so many just uh, shocking moments, I guess you can say. What are some of the challenges you face with trying to bring that type of script to life as a director? Well, it's really, I mean, the main challenge is that it's sort of like, an, it starts kind of like a love story and you sort of have to play with that genre before entering into the thriller. Really make believe that these two guys, you know, uh, Sky and Chris, they are going to fall in love. That their love is going to be so passionate that you go with the right. Uh, and then all of a sudden, start introducing elements of the thriller, and just being, um, how can I say it? You know, play enough with the genre and with the elements of this film that you know, in a nutshell, is most of it takes place inside of a house. So the film, it keeps uh, being a roller coaster. You know, like an something that you don't expect what is going to happen next. And even if you're shooting, you know, I would say a good chunk of the film in the same room, you never feel that you have seen it before, you know, that that is a new part of the room. So really trying to build the story and the thrill and the suspense and the emotion in such a confined space, you know, that would feel like sometimes, um, you know, you just have to really, uh, you know, plan it very well ahead because you won't be able to just say, well, let me improvise because all of a sudden you will realize there is no space for improvisation in a film like this. You know, it's very tight. And it felt like that when I read it, you know. Um, and I would say that challenge is what it, what it made me think like, okay, this could be a great film because I see it. And obviously a lot of, a big part of the film also takes place outside of the film with other characters. But, you know, that was sort of, quote unquote, like the easy part. That was like the fun part, you know, with this tippy toe. <laughs> yeah, speaking of the characters here, uh, Lily Krug, I think, gives a great, great performance as Sky. Like her villain, like she just, she had that switch, in my opinion, whenever you see her. Take me behind the casting and maybe what it was like to watch her bring this character to life in front of you. Well, it, it was really interesting because Lily, um, you know, as a person, as an individual, like most people, it's really beautiful, it's very charming, it has some great energy. Um, but then when you put him in front of the camera, he can play that, but he, he can also play the opposite. He can also play this person that is sort of mean, ruthless. Um, so that was pretty like, wow, that was amazing, you know, because you would be talking uh, with her before the take and everything was good, or during the rehearsals, you know, obviously I'll see that. And then she will flip, and you'll be like, wow, I wouldn't want to be in front of her. You know, definitely not alone, you know? Um, so that was pretty amazing. And the same, I, I can only say for all the actors, you know, like Cameron, it was amazing to have him. He plays most of the, of the film 
a chain to a wheelchair. And nevertheless, he gives an amazing performance. And his performance also escalates because, you know, it's, the movie keeps going. He only keeps finding himself in the biggest shit <laughs> before. <laughs> Excuse my friends, you know. Uh, and it's just amazing to see how he can double up, you know, and he can just like, you know, do it again and do it again even more and, and just keep you gripped um, to his performance. So I have to say that was really amazing. And obviously I can only say uh, wonderful things about both, uh, John Malkovich and Frank Grillo. I mean, you see them in the film, uh, their performances are just amazing. Both of them, they, they, so many tunes, you know, every time they show up on the screen, they're, you're like, oh my God, you know, like these guys are amazing. And obviously that's why they are who they are, you know. And, uh, and again, for Sasha Hughes, you know, the Chris Wise, you know, she's, she was just amazing, you know, to play the, the mother role and uh, just to see all the, all the subtleties that she could play, you know, from being the ex-wife who kind of like doesn't like anymore his ex-husband to just be rooting for him, you know, to, you know, to say uh, what they have left of a family, you know, let's put it that way. Yeah, you brought up John Malkovich. And what I think I loved about the film was, is we had all these serious moments in the house, but then I feel like he brought this light kind of comedic tone to the film. How important is it to have those moments where you can kind of relax as, as the viewer, uh, relax a little bit and then kind of dive back into the intensity when we get back into the house. Right, well, in this case, it was very important because his character, it was basically that quirky per person. So it only makes sense that there was a level of uh, stupidity built in the character that obviously brings some likeness to the film. Uh, I would like to say that, you know, his character has some, you know, brings some elements of the films of the Coen brothers, you know, where you have these guys, very serious situations, but nevertheless, uh, the characters who are involved on them, are, they have such a few layers of uh, intelligence sometimes that, you know, they just become really funny to see them collapse. And that is sort of what happened to the character that uh, John Malkovich plays, you know. Um, he is very peculiar and obviously is missing a few layers of importance in life. And what is a big tragedy become comedic at some time, you know, sometimes because of, because of that, because it's definitely like, wow, well, you can't expect that, you know, it's, it's too much to be real. So yeah, it's great in a film like this to have also those moments of lightness. Uh, they're sort of like, um, disseminated during the whole film, you know. The, I think that's great because otherwise it would be like too heavy, you know. And, and this is a thriller; it's a joyride. You know, you're supposed to enjoy suffering what's going on there because we don't want it to happen to us. We'd rather just experience the feeling without having to go through it. So we just like to see someone else being in trouble, you know. Whenever you get finished with a project, how hard is it to to get that final product in front of of the studio, or you know, getting those final touches to make sure that you have what you've gotten and and what you want from your film? Well, you know, it's it's hard and it's not in the sense that on one side you want to be a perfectionist, you want to make the best out of it, you know, you sign up for that, you know, every day you were filming it was the most important scene of the script every single day, and once the film is done. It feels the same, you know, you have to give it all to make it perfect. But at the same time, there is a level of, I can't wait to finish it because it's, you know, I give it all, I don't have anything left. So it's a funny um, combination of, uh, I want to let it go, but at the same time, I want to make sure that it's as best as it can be. So once you find that equilibrium, that's when you say, okay, I'm done, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> 